Hey, I'm Jamie from Stonemaier Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanism in the push-your-luck dice rolling game called Moon Rollers. In Moon Rollers, you are trying to recruit cards to your crew, um, either three of the same color or five different colors of crew members. For example, here is a crew member right here that you can try to gain in your crew. This is actually a somewhat unique one in that they all have, they have the same color. Here's, here's one that's a little bit more indicative of a lot of the cards that will come out on the table. And basically on your turn, you are rolling some dice and choosing uh, categories one at a time to complete on this card until you have successfully recruited them. So if I'm rolling dice and I have uh, two green icons that show up on the dice, I can start to work on this green category and on my turn I can continue to roll dice until I have at least three green icons showing. And then if I want to, I can work on other categories. Um, when the card is complete, so when all these categories are complete, they all have tokens on them, whether they're your tokens or another player's tokens. So say, for example, maybe I complete the green category and the orange category, and then some other player comes in, they have a bunch of blue and yellow, they complete these two categories. That player, the one who completes the card, gets the card itself, but all players score points based on these numbers. So I would score three points, um, I would score one point, they would score seven points, and they would get the card. In this way, I, I really like the semi-cooperation in Moon Rollers. You are competing against one another. You're trying to have the best crew. You're trying to get there the fastest, and then you score points at the end of the game. Um, but I, I, th there was, it's actually a legitimately good choice in the game. If I see a card that someone has already started working on, the choice to this to go after that card to start to try to complete that card. Uh, so I can get the card itself and get some points versus starting another card where I can maybe get more points from completing the category and hope that someone else completes the card later on for fewer points. That is a great choice in the game. I really, really like that choice. Also, the dice are beautiful. They're fun to roll. There's a way that there's a side of the dice that lets you roll more dice. That's always exciting. However, as much as I enjoy that mechanism, I think my favorite mechanism is just a little thing in the game. And you saw it a little bit on the cards. These are hazard tokens. So if I complete the orange category, yeah, I'm going to get a point if the card is complete. But I also, at that moment of completion, completing that category, not the whole card, I get a hazard token. Rather, I draw two hazard tokens. And so say I draw these two tokens and I choose one of them to keep. At the end of the game, these are worth the points indicated on the token. So maybe I'll choose the two. Two is better than one, right? However, on this two is a hazard token or a hazard icon. And at the end of the game, when you reveal these, if you are the player who has the most hazard icons on their tokens, you don't score any points from hazard tokens. You get points from other things that you did in the game, but you don't get points from hazard tokens. So here's another choice, two versus a five. One hazard versus two hazard. Five points is a lot. But do I risk not scoring any points at all from hazard tokens at the end of the game? These are all kept face down. This is a face down private decision. So you really don't know what other players have chosen. You don't, you, all you can see is how many hazard tokens they actually have. This is a great choice. And I've seen this in other games where if you, if you have too much of a certain thing, then you just automatically lose the game. And that is fun in certain games. I think high society is one that I thought of for that category. Uh, I think I might even have, have a video about this somewhere, like instant lose conditions, basically, where if you reach a certain threshold, if you have the most of all players, QE does this too. If you have spent the most money in the auction game QE, you cannot win the game. You're not allowed to win the game. So those types of con conditions. But I really like in this game, in Moon Rollers, how it isn't a condition that says you can't win this game. Rather, it just says you can't score this specific type of point. Uh, these hazard points. You can't score these points if you have the most hazards of any player, which I thought was really, really clever. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Moon Rollers, either this uh, semi-cooperative mechanism of completing the cards or this hazard mechanism. If you like it in Moon Rollers, if you've seen anything like it in other games, especially in cases where you don't lose the entire game, you just lose out on a certain scoring category. I'd love to hear your thoughts about that in the comments below. Thanks.